Yeah, you've read that title right. We've looked into those characters with deep-rooted lore, and others with... meh, not so much. Duffman can't breathe! Oh no! Ooh! So why not a dog? Santa's little helper may not be the most obedient pooch, but gosh darn it, we love him anyway. Good doggy, good doggy. Like Maggie Simpson, he doesn't need a whole lot of lines to make an impression. So in this video, I'll be going through his journey from a cute little puppy into his rise to becoming a super duper genius. This is the complete timeline of Santa's little helper. Oh, poochie, poochie, poochie. Oh. And while we're on the subject of man's best friend, we need to talk about Cyber Ghost VPN, which is the guardian and protector of over 38 million users every single day, and is one of the most recommended VPNs on Trustpilot too, making it absolutely awesome. Sorry. Basically, CyberGhost VPN protects your internet activity through a virtual private network. Your IP address is hidden and your data is encrypted, basically being your cyber invisibility cloak. When I was an air hostess, I used to use public Wi-Fi all the time in order to save money abroad. And this time in particular was a Starbucks Wi-Fi in Buenos Aires. And a couple of days later, when I landed back in England, I figured my Spotify must have been hacked as someone was trying to interrupt my Enya to listen to some Argentinian music. I didn't actually know that public Wi-Fi isn't that secure, so after changing all of my passwords across all of my social media accounts just to make sure, I really needed a long-term device protector. And luckily with CyberGhost VPN, you can avoid all of those risks from the root, protecting your personal info and accounts permanently. It can also be used for fun. You can unlock entire catalogs of movies and shows not yet available in your country. For example, in the US, you are severely missing out on all of the Studio Ghibli movies, which is an absolute travesty. So all you need to do is connect to the UK server and up they pop. Plus, just one sub can protect up to seven devices all at the same time, for you, your loved ones, all to browse and stream safely and securely. By using the link down in my description, you can enjoy an 83% discount off CyberGhost VPN. That's one seventy a month and four months for free. Plus, they also have a 45-day money-back guarantee too, and 24-7 support, so it's totally risk-free too. Becoming a Simpson SLH was born to Shebiscuit and she was the fastest greyhound in the biz. And as a pub, the two quickly formed a very tight bond, making it all the more heartbreaking when they were torn apart by a cruel greyhound trainer, Les Moore. But even though he may have the genes of super speed running through his veins, this doggo didn't perform as expected on the track. But luckily, in a twist of fate, this failure would become his biggest saviour one fateful Christmas Eve. Eat! A Simpson. The episode Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire saw Homer at a low point during Christmas, unable to buy his family presents due to a loss of his bonus. This leads him into taking a job as a shopping mall Santa in order to make a few extra bucks, but even so, his check only came to a measly $13. So Barney encouraged Homer to hit the racetrack to make one last bet in order to save Christmas, putting all of his money behind long shot number eight, i.e. Santa's little helper. But it turns out that this pooch wasn't so helpful, and Homer and Bart didn't even stay long enough to see the dog finish last. Ah, forget it, let's go. And having lost his final race, Santa's little helper was thrown out on his own and happened upon Homer and Bart just by coincidence. He wasn't appreciated on the track, but he did turn out to be the Christmas miracle that the Simpsons dearly, dearly needed. What's his name? Number eight. I, I mean, Santa's little helper. Boy's best friend. This very friend didn't just stick around for one episode, like many of the Simpsons' later pets, like Stampy, Pinchy, and even Lisa's pony. SLH quickly became part of the Simpsons' family and formed an incredibly endearing relationship with Bart. 
but despite being a little cutie, he wasn't the most obedient, constantly destroying stuff around the house, like the family quilt, Homer's $125 sneakers, and his giant cookie too. This is not happening. This is not happening! It was starting to become clear that SLH was perhaps not pet material and that the only thing that saved this pooch from the pound was Bart Simpson. He was tasked to tame the dog by attending Emily Winthrop's canine college, ruled over by a shrill tyrant with an affinity for choke chains. But even still, Santa's little helper proved to be just as a bad student as Bart, with Homer even making arrangements to give the poor dog away. But luckily, during a tearful night with Bart, the dog finally learned some commands and finally graduated canine college just in time. You son of a bitch. God show. <laughs> However, the duo received arguably their best storyline in season three's Dog of Death. When the doggo suffered from a twisted stomach requiring an expensive operation, the family was left with an agonizing decision, and Homer's tale of doggy heaven and doggy hell didn't offer much comfort. Is there a doggy hell? Well, of course, it couldn't be a heaven if there weren't a hell. Ultimately, the family decided to each make their own sacrifices in order to save their dog, and therefore, he recovered from the costly operation. But the family's shared joy of Santa's little helper's recovery was short-lived as they missed out on winning a lottery ticket and had to endure Chub Night. Chub? I don't even know what that is. Feeling unwanted and neglected now, Santa's little helper ran away and embarked on a grand adventure all on his own. He fought bears, saved babies from burning buildings, but he did eventually end up in the evil clutches of Mr. Burns, who saw himself in the dog with his slender physique. And so Burns sadistically clockwork orange style brainwashed the harmless pup into making him a vicious attack dog. So much so that when Bart came searching for him, he was very nearly mauled by his own best friend. But thankfully, SLH's fond memories of Bart cured his hostility just in time, and the whole family were very glad to have him home. And they caught it popular. SLH's naughty side returned in 2001 Greyhounds, with his boundless energy leading him back onto the dog track. Only this time, he didn't finish last, as he found love with the dog She's the Fastest. Well, looks like he's trying to jump over, but he can't quite make it. Their Lady in the Tramp style courtship resulted in the birth of 25 puppies. But Mr. Burns' evil once again casts over the dog in one of his most sinister schemes yet, planning to skin the pups in order to make himself a fur coat. However, it did mean that we got to win is one of the most catchiest songs ever to be performed on TV. Na 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 Sorry. But after Bart and Lisa's intervention, Mr. Burns learned the error of his ways, and he did still keep the pups but instead, he turned them into racing champions, which is, in my opinion, a far smarter investment than a bloody coat. Like his kiddo, She's the Fastest wasn't seen again, but luckily, SLH did move on pretty quickly, making even more puppies with Dr. Hibbert's poodle called Rosa Barks. Apparently, Homer lied about getting him neutered, and instead treating him to a night on the town. And as we all know, Santa's little helper is nothing but a hound dog, and is also a little bit of a playboy. Dogs meeting on dining room table? Ooh. And it's not just bitches, this dog's hounding. He also has a weird thing for kitties too, sharing a very awkward moment with Snowball the Cat on New Year's. And as it turns out, this wasn't just a one-time thing, as there's some weird stuff going on in the background in some episodes. Being replaced. Like any family member, it is clear that the Simpsons family do love Santa's little helper, but he isn't always appreciated. After Bart signed up for a credit card under the name Santos El Helper, he bought a very expensive collie named Laddie. And like Bart, the family were instantly besotted with the brand new dog, so much so that even Homer tried to impress him. 
Homer, are you wearing a tie to impress Laddie? Do you think he noticed? And once again, poor SLH was ignored and left out in the cold once again. This not only got worse, when Bart's extravagant purchases were repossessed and he chose to give away SLH in order to keep Laddie. This was a decision that Bart would soon come to regret. So after a pep talk with Homer, Bart was determined to reunite with his best friend, and he went from person to person to try and find him, before finding the Greyhound, who was now renamed Springles, living with kind old Mr. Mitchell. And if you thought that Bart could sink no lower, think again, as he tried to steal this dog right under the blind man's nose. In the end, even despite his neglect, SLH still chose Bart to be his owner, proving time and time again his unwavering loyalty to the Simpsons. His life with the Simpsons While not the most attentive pet owners, the Simpsons do at times really do show their devotion to the Greyhound. When it was revealed that Homer shares the same birthday as him, they were quick to shower SLH with attention and love. The family also provides him with plenty of adventures too. His trip to school resulted in a hilarious Aliens parody, even if a greased up Scotsman's adventures in an air vent did get Principal Skinner fired. Overall, whether it was playing with Bart or just sitting around watching late night TV with Snowball 2, Santa's little helper seems perfectly content at living at 742 Evergreen Terrace. And even though he did eat Homer's beloved cookie in the past, they do share a very close relationship now. Although sometimes it might be a little too close. They often enjoy a lazy dog dangling afternoon lounging in the backyard and SLH is only too happy to participate in Homer's many, many schemes. He aided Homer's career as a food critic. Come on, help me out here. Ruff. Ruff. Yeah, I don't know, you've been pitching that all night and helped him exercise in secret when he wanted to get in shape to impress Bart. Santa's little helper even lived up to his name when he acted as a reindeer to Homer Santa on his mission to steal presents from underneath every Springfieldian's tree. There are many things that SLH would do in order to prove himself to his family, and as man's best friend in general, as long as they don't require a whole lot of bravery. He saved a chocolate bar instead of Homer during a house fire and abandoned Lisa when she tried to spend the night in a cemetery to conquer her fears. But it is his cowardly underdog nature that makes him a Simpsons after all, making him as human as a cartoon dog could be. Suds McDuff SLH's lack of bravery did eventually work in his favour to become the new face of Duff. When the family's new luxury treehouse was burned down, the dog was far too scared to save Homer, and instead Snowball 2 came to his rescue and Homer worshipped the cat while renouncing all ownership of Santa's little helper live on TV. Let me make this perfectly clear. I have no dog. But when he was photographed drinking a can of beer on his hind legs, Santa's little helper became the new Duff mascot, replacing a poor old washed up Duff man. And in a parody of the real life Spuds McKenzie, Santa's little helper donned a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses and became the brand new face of Duff in all of their commercials. His rise to fame even brought back horrible owner Les Moore, and Homer's words came back to haunt him as Moore was able to claim the dog as his as Homer had renounced his ownership. But the family's plan to show their dog to be a scaredy cat tainted his image and so he was dropped from Duff, resulting in a brand new mascot called Duff McShark. And so SLH was finally returned to his family. The Long Arm of the Poor Like many characters in the show, Santa's little helper didn't just remain in a stringent small box for long, he did waver occasionally from his lack of bravery. After rescuing Homer from a corn maze, he was enrolled into Springfield Animal Police Academy. He came a long way from almost flunking obedience school and turned out to be a surprisingly dedicated police dog. Just don't ask him to file a police report. 
Partnered with Lou, SLH enjoyed the perks of wearing the uniform, but soon learned that justice isn't always served on the job, and so the pressures of it soon got to him, and in a moment of blind rage, he finally bit Bart. Fearing he had lost his friend once again, Bart settled for a new pet in the form of a python named Strangles. And surprisingly, Strangles never turned on his owner, but he did cause some panic by running or slithering amok in the school, accidentally knocking over vials of acid that created toxic fumes. And so, the Popo were caught. This marked a change in SLH, before he had helped the Simpsons just as long as it didn't cost him his life. But he put all of that aside when he risked his life in order to save an unconscious Bart. This led on to him being retired from the force, and was left once again as boy's best friend. And as for Strangles, Willie did find him a new home, but he wasn't overly pleased about it. Santa's Little Helper and His PTSD SLH's story came in full circle in season 31's finale. The episode saw him become obsessed with Bart's old Santa hat from the episode Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, and he attacked Marge when she tried to take it away from him. With the threat of SLH being put down, the Simpsons didn't have long to unravel the cause of his PTSD and sought help from dog psychiatrist Elaine Wolf. Along the journey, it was revealed that he views Marge as a comforting mother figure, and his attack over the Santa hat stemmed from his time as a racing dog. In order to dig a bit more, the Simpsons did manage to track down Les Moore and discovered how he separated SLH from his mother, leading to a long-awaited reunion with She Biscuit. And it was so cute, and they even stayed in touch, inviting his mother over to watch Marflix together on Mother's Day. This dedicated episode really rounded his character and proved that he had a much deeper character arc than many other Springfoodians. His future. Now, this is a fun little segment where we cut to the future episodes in the show. So, what's the future for Santa's little helper? Well, as it turns out, it's teased that he evolves past humans and also survives as Santa's little hybrid, stitched together from parts of Snowball 5. It's all a bit weird, all a bit bonkers, but one thing that is clear is that Santa's little helper won't be going away anywhere anytime soon. Many thanks again to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video. If you want to protect yourself online, click on the link in my description to benefit from an exclusive discount reserved just for you, my lovely, lovely viewers.